Hi there, it's in the microphone. Well, it's been 2,925 days. Oh, no, 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 it's been eight years <laughs> and three days. Well, I don't know the time this video will be dropping, but it's been eight years and some coins. And on today's video, I will be sharing my eight years experience in Ghana as a Nigerian or as a foreigner. Well, if this looks like what you love to see, why not grab your coffee, grab your seeds, and grab your popcorn because it's going to be lit. Guys, enough of the talking. Hit the red button to subscribe and also turn on notifications. So whenever I upload a video, you'll be the first to get notified. Guys, enough of the talking. Let's get straight into the video. Yenko. I know a lot of you will be like, why does Blue have two passports or what is she looking for in her passport? So I was actually looking for the first time or the first stamp I had on my international passport because I want to be giving facts here and I found, this is my old passport here. It says on the 6th of October 2014. So that was the first time I stepped into motherland. Yeah. So today's video is more like an update of my life here as a foreigner or as a Nigerian. <laughs> Guys, I have to give a disclaimer. This baby girl over here, hmm, I kind of, I don't know if I should call it a gift. I smile a lot. Just in case you get offended by me smiling um, randomly, please, you can, uh, I don't know, you could. I don't know you could you could stop watching if you don't like people that smile a lot or you get offended by me if i smile a lot because i feel it's god that gave me that it's a long story though but then that is not why we are here you know why we are here guys it's been 2925 days hey charlie but women we can calculate though can keep this date eh we don't mess with our dates <laughs> yes we don't mess with dates so it's been eight years i don't know the time this video is going to be out but i'm supposed to be popping some champagne and all of those things but i had my mods i don't know if you saw the earlier clip that <laughs> yeah so it's been eight full years i mean if i was acquiring like two degrees i would have like i would have like leveled up but it doesn't mean that i haven't been doing other things i mean academic stuff in the interim and stuff like that yeah so it's been eight years and ah oh god eight years seems like 800 years <laughs> seriously eight years isn't easy like we just have like two more years to go and uh, it will make me 10 years yeah well let me explain something me being here for eight years does not necessarily mean i was here like each year like i'm not going back to my country i went back even at a point i even had to go back for my national service and all of that but i just kind of put everything right from the time i came to ghana up to now and i calculated eight years so i've been here legally for eight years uh -uh. you guys should applaud me, applaud me, applaud me. <laughs> seriously if i was supposed to i think i'm due to go get um the Ghanaian citizenship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> seriously i think i'm due but i i don't know if i really want to do that i don't know but i'm still praying about it because you know once you have dual nationality it kind of restricts you from a lot of things and if i should travel for example i can't acquire another citizenship of that country so like i said it's still on that thoughts and prayers and all of that guys it hasn't been easy it has been a roller coaster i will not even lie let me start from like the time i came to ghana i'm going to put like the first stamp i had on my passport on the screen you get to realize that that was like a road trip my first my first coming to ghana was a road trip like i still remember that trip where i was <laughs> When I also come to Ghana first, my dad actually made my elder sister travel with me to Lagos. And it was just like a small thing. It almost made her to bring me to Ghana. I'm like, I'm not a child. Hello. Like, I'm grown. I have chest now. Hello. Like, <laughs> 
seriously like my dad is a sweetheart like i love that man so much i owe that man everything like he's such a sweetheart but it keeps he keeps treating me like a baby like i know i'm forever his baby girl but it was just too much guys in case my voice is low it's night time and shooting the studio at night time is really crazy because we have other people in this place so i want to be respectful of people's um when i say privacy or what i don't know so i just want to be respectful you know how we do it you know you know yeah so my dad is such a sweetheart he made my sister <laughs> my sister took me from the southern part of nigeria to the western part of nigeria which is lagos and it was really crazy and she then beat me bye bye <laughs> So I came to Ghana, Ghana was just, I'm like, hey, so I'm, I'm outside the country. <laughs> she was like, hey, so I'm outside the country. Ah, ah, gay, gay. It was really, it was really amazing. I'm trying to like summarize my eight years experience in Ghana, my challenges, what to expect in case you're coming to Ghana. It's a what it and all of those gist and information you need to know this video i i don't know how i'm gonna compress all of this in this video but if i get to realize that it's too long i might get to split the video because long videos there i know you guys will not watch the video you guys you guys i see you <laughs> so i came to ghana it was really a beautiful sight to behold i mean i came at night so i saw the light i was like eee. so you guys have lights here so my in-law came with my sister they came to pick me up at the station we went like ah, i felt so loved i felt like i felt like a celebrity like i felt ah <laughs> seriously i felt i felt so honored like the way they came to carry me like hey blue hey Seriously, it was really fun. Like the reception was so good. My sister, the, <laughs> oh my god, it was just so nice. They even had to chatter like um, dropping from Accra to Kofori. They are like, ee. <laughs> Charlie, it was more like presidential candidate just arrived the country. You understand? You know how they. <laughs> but it was really really fun, and I got to like try the Ghanaian food. But it took me like some some time before i try the food if you're coming to ghana like i always say keep an open mind don't come with a myopic or with a shallow mind that oh i want to eat the food from my country i want to eat the food from my country <laughs> don't do that even though you you not really enjoy your relocation or your moving or your holiday here because you already have this perception of you want to eat your local food you want to eat your appetite no appetite is for ghana you want to eat your stuff oh by the way appetite is alcohol so it's not food you want to eat your your food your local food and all of that with that mindset you won't get to like enjoy when i came i get an open mind but then i was like i want to try rice rice you know with rice i think rice is kind of the same if there's anything that's going to be different it's going to be with the sauce or with the stew so i tried it and it was really really nice i think i ate rice for a long time my feet became fat the other day someone was telling me that oh if i sit down like this someone would think that i'm a very fat and chubby person but when i stand up they realize i'm slim i'm like eh. but truly truly i'm a fat person i'm a chubby person if you see me from my cheek i'm chubby just that i told myself you can't be that you're a supermodel you're a model you can't be <laughs> you can't be fat but no shades to my chubby my fat ladies out there you guys are so beautiful in your own way just that i prefer to be this way mm -hmm. yeah so i tried the food like i said keep an open mind in terms of their culture tradition way of life lifestyle anything just keep an open mind you enjoy ghana yeah so my first year was really crazy i don't do i even remember what really happened my first year first year i was stick to eating rice and um, my sister ah i lived with my sister so my sister will cook will eat the local food like our local food cook our local food and all of that like we're not even buying things but my sister was spoiling me oh my sister I love you, sissy. She was spoiling me. She would take me out to restaurants. We eat. Like, she gave me this treatment. Like, hey. 
my sister gave me all those nice treatments i owe that babe a lot she took me out to a very nice restaurant in kofredia and lost all the pictures hey charlie i would have just displayed them here my sister was such a sweetheart like that babe hmm. so after that I lived in kofredia like and that, like I said, keep an open mind because I schooled in what actually brought me to Ghana, what actually engineered my relocation or my movements to Ghana was schooling. Yeah, I came for the purpose of schooling. I don't know the purpose by which you might want to come to Ghana. Maybe you come because you just want to have like a vacation or you want to move down here or you want to... I don't know, for whatever reason, business or whatsoever. Just make sure you plan you you tell yourself this is what you really want to do because i mean if you're just didn't try and error you could come and try and regret it because your mind was not really into it but if your mind is into it just put your mind 100 percent don't say 50 50. don't do like this don't do don't do mago mago <laughs> don't do mago mago just be straight you understand and you enjoy yourself please if you're coming to ghana please bring ego you know what's ego lajan for those of you that are french bring cash like you need money to live here like seriously after 2014 when i came here it was things were not like this like as of then i'll call myself like a big girl seriously I, I was a big girl in in the sense that my dad could send me like feeding fee let's assume he sent me like hundred thousand nigerian naira hundred thousand was like two thousand five hundred cities for feeding i'm like hey I wasn't even saying like it was looking like small money to me, you understand? 2500 but it was quite big. 2500 wow. So he would send out money, like I was stuck up. Charlie, sometimes I think being in school is very sweet because I mean, you have your dad or your parents paying your bills, you just be in school, learning, making them proud, and they'll just send you money. Like, because when you're done with school, <laughs> you're on your own, baby. <laughs> you are on your own. But I think I started being on my own ever since, like, ever since in my life. I've always been, like, on my own, trying to get my own thing myself, do my thing myself as an independent woman. I love that. I love that mentality of being independent. When I say independent woman, please, let me explain myself because you, before you come for me, because I know some of you are sharpening your, your knife. Please don't come for me. When I talk about independent or independency, I mean you being able to like cater for your own needs do your own thing with little or less support from your parents or whatsoever so that was it for me like i really love the sense of me being able to afford what i want with my own money or me being able to like do what i want with my own money i don't have to go and beg <laughs> i don't have to go and beg because it's crazy it's really really crazy like I think I have, I would say bad habits. I would say a little bad habits because, you know, as a child, your parents, they are very much 100% responsible for your well-being, like your everything, they are responsible. But I think I'm one of those child that feel that, mm, you don't really need to like, if you can provide me with shelter, that's fine, I'll take care of myself, that is me. But I know it's not supposed to be like that, but that is my mentality. Like, I want to get my own thing myself. I want to do my own thing myself. I want to be my own boss. <laughs> that is just by the way. Like I said, if you're coming to Ghana through school routes, just be prepared to like, um, especially when you are doing your tertiary here, just keep an open mind and all of that. You get to enjoy, be it you're doing your tertiary, you're doing your, um, you're coming for vacation or you're moving down here i mean you're going to enjoy it meanwhile i forgot to tell you guys that my braided headband is from my small business luxury by blue see i actually run a business it's a unisex store where you get all your trendy stuff i mean for male and female please do want to support your girl okay go check my business out i'll leave the link in the description and also on this video so you go check it out we have all the things i need like to look trendy sweet and cute and all of those things yeah so another thing you need to know is that like i said come with extra money you know you've come with money before i told you money come with another money <laughs> like i'm not even kidding you i kid you not come with money because this is 2022 and things are just crazy like living here in ghana especially the capital city is just so outrageous it's crazy like 
<sighs> come with money the money i i came with as at eight years ago i can't survive on that money right now because surely things are crazy like i'm not even exaggerating this i have some videos on my channel where i got to interact with the drivers and people and they share their take on the, the present economic situation or issues or problem and it's just so crazy so please i've told you to come with money before right come with another money okay another thing you need to know is that ghana or ghanaians are it's an english speaking country but however they have a general or general accepted um language they all have in common which is the tree so our advice that you try to like i said keep an open mind so that you can just learn this language the language is not too hard like someone saying bra it's very easy bra you, you even with the even with the expression you can tell that it means come I think I've given tips on how to learn language. If you want to learn a new language, try and watch the expression of the person saying the thing. Maybe someone is he's doing like this, like maybe you're holding something, and the person do like do like this, shake their head like that. I need to like keep that thing or like you understand. Sometimes someone might not want to communicate it verbally. The person might use expression. You know about African parents, they can they can express themselves in so many ways. They don't even need to talk. The expression alone tell you what to do and what not to do. Yeah, so keep an open mind and try and learn the true language. It's very easy, it's very simple, and and try and get Ghanaian friends seriously. Don't get yourself abreast with some um, good Ghanaian friends. And another thing you need to know is that please, before you come to this country, try and get accommodation before you come. Don't come as that session because Charlie. But however, I've got you covered. In case you need accommodation, short stay, you want a house to, to buy, a house to rent, whatsoever, I've got you covered. I think I have some videos I've done for um, some houses and short stays and all of that. So do check those videos out so you don't get stranded in Ghana. You can't come to Ghana and be hanging in the sky. <laughs> yes and one other thing you need to know again please come with the fourth money the third or fourth money come with the fourth money because you need money seriously you need money because you don't want to come to ghana and start begging people you understand a lot of people are already frustrated here a lot of people are are crying a lot of people are devastated you understand you don't want to come here and be broke and start asking somebody for money so come with extra extra money let me assume you're coming to ghana with let's say thousand dollars Charlie, it will not be enough for you i will not lie thousand dollars and it depends on how long you are staying it depends on what and what activities you embark on like will you be staying in a hotel will you be traveling here and there what will you be doing with thousand dollars like thousand dollars it looks big but it's not big oh that one dear one week like being here as a nigerian has really shaped me in so many ways i think so when you get to live here for a while you get to realize that you get to connect with the locals or with the Ghanaians more you know when you travel to a country and spend like let's say one week you don't really get to like enjoy the the city or the people and stuff the cultures and stuff you don't get, really get to see it for example you are coming towards um he came somewhere around november and it's not yet december you won't get to experience the december in ghana right it's good to stay longer so that you really get to experience and enjoy yourself but please plan before you come to ghana don't just jump into ghana that a hey, ghana is one small place ghana is no longer small again it's not like the, like the dubai of africa <laughs> seriously i kid you not well some of the challenges you have to know is that one the language is a barrier it could be a barrier i don't know if you are some people are not really is it bilingual or what some people are not really open to learning new languages and stuff the language is a barrier because most Ghanaian they speak their language they appreciate their language so much it's beautiful but they really appreciate their language they assume everyone is a Ghanaian so they just speak the truth for you like oh but your um brawai 
he, unless you speak English, that oh, I don't understand what you mean. Oh, do not switch it to English. And some of them, some or most people, especially the market people, they find it hard to understand English. That's one of the challenges you have to know. And also, accommodation can be a problem to you. I mean, if you don't do it right, accommodation can be a problem to you. For example, you want to stay in the capital city and you want to stay in vantage points that are very, very pricey and your money is not up to, it could be a problem to you because you want to live in the capital city, you want to live at the vantage point in the capital city. It could, it could mean that you need more money to be able to stay where you want to stay. But then, Ghana is not just Accra. We have the Eastern region, we have the Northern region, we have the Ashanti region, we have the uh, Western region, we have other regions. And I think cost of living there is quite cheaper as to living in Accra, Ghana. Well, another thing you need to know is that Ghanaians are not loud. Ghanaians are very calm, peaceful. They are so, they're so sweet. Like, <sighs> they're so sweet yeah most of them are very sweet you understand i've had i've had good experiences like this i think my my good experiences are like 95 percent that is my good experiences and the five percent is you understand in every country you always have like challenges like i say there's no place you go to that like, everywhere will just be all good you won't have challenges here and there and all of those things yeah but i think if it's 95 percent, that means it's above average and that is a pass mark that that is good you understand so like i said keep an open mind try and make Ghanaian friends and try to be um don't bring problem here don't bring <laughs> Ghanaian they don't like problem they like peace they like peace always they don't like <laughs> they don't like fights and stuff like that and also try to get their local scene because if you are coming to Rome your scene i think you get to like spend a lot doing the roaming thing but if you have like your the local chip the sim card is going to really help you a lot and another thing i want you to know is that try as much as possible to visit other regions in ghana because ghana is not just accra if you get to visit other regions, I bet you even love that place more than the capital city. But the capital city is not really having much natural things that you you get. But if you go to like, let's say, a Buri, Eastern region, other regions, you get to see the, the vegetations, you see this, you see that, and other things. I think Accra is just overhyped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel I'm missing a whole lot of things I should be seeing. See, one thing about my my presentation or my experiences is that i don't know how to like script my things i don't know how to write it down i just say it like that because it is my experience so i don't know why i should be scripting it down or something but however it's always good to script it down in case um you forget so fast so that i don't forget something and be like oh but however if i get to forget anything i feel that oh i didn't say this this was very necessary this could help someone out there and stuff like that i can i can get to make like the other part of this video to also pass the information out across so eight years it's been a roller coaster like it's been crazy but then so far it's been amazing yeah it's been an amazing experience and i i am so humbled and appreciative of everyone that has come into my life in these eight years period of time i have met nice people i've met crazy people i've met beautiful people i've met a lot of people and some of them have turned family and i came here just having my sister in mind that okay i'm going to like be with my sister that is it like i didn't have any plan that i'm going to make family here i'm going to i'm going to get loved by people here i can just know like i came here to be with my sister and look at me i have family here in ghana i even have in-laws in ghana like it's so beautiful and i want to appreciate you all also you guys are my family also you understand i don't know i kind of feel i kind of feel connected to you guys in some way especially those of you that actually watch this video and leave your take or leave your comments i get to like interact with you guys i don't know you from nowhere but then i kind of feel connected to you it's sometimes you don't need to meet people physically before you can connect with them you can connect with them in so many ways so you guys kind of make me feel like i have you guys or you guys i don't know i just feel i just feel connected to you guys and then 
if I get to remember some of them, I'm gonna write it down and make a second part of this video. Yeah, so let me know if you're getting to watch this video at the foreign and let me know how long you've lived in Ghana, what your experience have been like, do you wish to stay here and all of that. Well, if you ask me if I would love to live in Ghana again, I'll say yes, yes, yes. But then I'm not sure it's gonna be the capital city. I don't know. A Christ chasing me away. They are chasing me away. A Christ chasing me away. <laughs> oh my god. But then I would love to live here in Ghana and I recommend Ghana. Ghana is not a bad country. Ghana is there, though there are one or two things going on. But then, I mean, it's cool for your family, business, whatsoever you're doing. Come to Ghana. And um, I don't know, please, this is not a paid ad or whatsoever. Ghana government didn't pay me to do nothing. This is based on my experience, my honest experience living here. Well, at this one, if you're still watching this video and you've not subscribed, I see you. No, I saw what you did there. You didn't get to subscribe. You think I didn't see you? I saw you. You didn't subscribe. <laughs> okay, now let me give you like one second to subscribe. Oh, we well, did. Hey, welcome to the family. Well, guys, if you make it to this part of the video, I will say you are my real VVIP and I love you so much. If at this point you've not already subscribed, Please hit the red button to subscribe and also turn on notifications so whenever I upload videos like this, you'll be the first to get notified. Guys, until next time, stay safe. Remember, Jesus really loves you. See you on my next video.